What's good with the YouTube? Y'all know Big Flacco with the convict's perspective. And I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. So, this is a topic that pretty much it doesn't go after actives or inactives, right? But it talks about people who are incarcerated. They're full-fledged soldados, right? They're leaders. They be running shit, right? Once they parole and get out, they go straight back to old behaviors, degenerate behaviors, homeless, drug usage, beating other ladies, whatever it may be. But they're not the same man that you've seen when they were in prison that all these youngsters looked up to. Okay. Now, this happens a lot more than people realize. Like I said, every time they go in, you see them come and go, right? They get out to the streets, they run on a hard one, right? They go on one. They come back months later, weeks later, whatever it may be. This time they have less teeth and they lost all that weight that they just fucking bulked up with while they were down for two years. It's a cycle. And in the 90s and 2000s, it, it would happen all the time. And that used to be the talk of a lot of people that in there they'd have to listen to this individual over here who would act, talk all intelligent, was running the yard, was handing out discipline, was doing thousands of burpees, writing thousands of thousand word essays, right? But yet as soon as they got to the streets, they abandoned everything that was taught to them behind the wall and went back to the degenerative motives. That's what you call individuals that can't function in society. They can only function behind the walls where they're institutionalized and they have that supervision that comes from not the correctional staff, but from their people. Therefore, the only sense of worth or importance they find is basically behind the wall. Like I said, some of these individuals could be looked at like gods and kings and all this stuff. They get to the streets. They're no different than any other dopamine out there on the streets. Nowadays in society, if you seek it, there's a lot more opportunity to succeed. You don't, don't just have to come out and s selling dope or rip and run. You have the options to do something else with your life. And a lot of people do that. Some of the ones I see that are the most successful that parole are the homeboys that don't obligate themselves. You know, they do their time. They do it uh, solid. They stand out of their business. They get out to the streets and they focus on their family and themselves. All that other stuff is no longer important because they're no longer behind the walls. And there's a small percentage of people who, you know, fulfill that when they get out. Whether they're active or inactive. See, this isn't about being active or inactive. Because if you have degenerative motives and you allow them to pretty much uh, sneak back into your character, that's just who you are. You, you're not done with that previous lifestyle that you used to live. You had reservations the whole time when you were in prison. Therefore, you're contrary to everything that was built up in you when you were behind the wall. Back in the days... When uh, a lot of the Garnales were slammed down and mostly all the solid notes that also members were slammed down. There was a lot of dudes that were bros that were out there that sneaked their way out there. They manipulated their way out there. Some of them were just, uh, you know, either on borrowed time out there or some of them may have been working with the administration or whatever it may be. There was always that talk amongst the separation between northerners and bros at the time. And a lot of talk from the northerners was this. These guys are supposed to be the big homies running this shit. They're supposed to have status, but yet they're over there fucking getting high on dope. You know, they're over there buying dope from the opposition. They're over there coming to the yard all fucking smacked back. And so that built a lot of fucking animosity. It built a lot of fucking uh, hidden emotions from certain individuals who didn't have status. So they felt they didn't have a voice to voice their opinion. See, uh, North Daniel does not take his status out to the streets. Let's first remember that. That's only his status when he's behind the wall. He's committed to the movement. When he paroles the street, the struggle is a little bit different. But it's, he's taking that on as an individual, as his own man. And if he can help homeboys along the way, so be it. But he's no longer obligated to any type of circle, any type of uh, commitment or anything like that. You're supposed to retain your citizenship. And not go back to the old attitudes that you used to have before you went to prison. See, that was the whole focal point was to go to prison, have safe yards to go to, to where you could program, learn a trade, educate yourself, become a better human being, go home and not have to return and just be a, be a citizen out there in society. But like I said, there's a lot of degenerate motives that people hide. You know, they hide because they can't let them surface when they're in a prison yard. Everybody just goes with the program. 
And see, it's real easy to go back to those type of behaviors when you're no longer committed or obligated to something. That's why a lot of bros used to head home and they weren't committed to functioning on the streets at, back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. Because they knew if they fucked up, what was going to happen? And see, a degenerate or degenerate acts is weighed by you. A degenerate is basically someone who starts to deteriorate from the program that they had and starts to become something weaker than what they were supposed to uphold in themselves. You see, you set the bar up here for yourself to be up up here, you know, positive, promote promote this and professionalism and respect and all this to down here, dolphin status. You know what I'm saying? Fucking doing fucking uh, cash for keys or fucking, you know, running checks and credit cards and running drugs and just not really caring about life. You see how that could just change in, in just one moment, one instant. And it happens all the time. See, behind the walls, especially now that the Garnales are back out there, there's a little bit of uh, what you call uh, micromanaging of the manpower that are there as far as using or getting out of line. So you're not going to see someone start to go down those dope fucking paths, right? And if they do, they're going to eventually get called out on it. But once you're out there in the streets, you don't have those people that are watching you. You're not being micromanaged. You're not obligated to just to follow any type of procedure except for the procedures and policies you have for yourself. And it is crazy how someone could be in there looked at with honor and respect and integrity and just get out to the streets and just lose all that. Lose all their morals. You know, and I'll give you some situations. There was a homeboy on the East Bay. Man, for a long time since the 80s, right? I'm not going to mention his name. School people, I've seen them fucking be the sponsor for several individuals. He gets out to the streets. He's fucked back on that heroin, and he's back fucking selling his lady's pussy just to get that next fix. Another individual, right, I recruited. And um, I had another person serve as a co-sponsor, Mousy, right? Schooled him when I was in corporate and I was in my astro, I got to undertake his schooling there. He ended up being selled up with the regiment commander there, Silver, for years. He gets out. He comes out all professional, respectful, just just how we were in there. You know what I mean? He wants to plug into the regiment. So I make a call. I give him some dope. Later on that day, the Cardinal's calling me. Hey, we need that money from that dude. Give me his number. He's asking the Cardinal if the dude has a bank account that they can fucking deposit the check in. And he's running the muck all over the fucking place. Just like that. Back to those degenerate behaviors. I can give you story after story after story, right? But, you know, I don't want this to just to be about just active cats. See, there's inactive cats that do the same fucking thing. Same behaviors, same doping fucking antics. And sometimes they could be even worse because they're not worried about going back to active standees when they go back to fucking prison. That's not no longer their concern. You know, I'd be asked about certain homeboys from time to time. And I'm like, what's up with this homeboy? And they'd be like, oh, he's living in the creek. Hey, what's up with this homeboy? Oh, he overdosed and died. Hey, what's up with this homeboy? Man, he's in a mental hospital. And see, the thing is, that's kind of fucked up, is when you're in prison, and you're working on yourself, and you're following all the protocol policies and procedures that the homeboys have for you, it's easy because you're behind the walls. Once you get to the streets, you don't have the tools when you come across this problem or this issue. And that's why, time and time again, you have homeboys that are relapsing or going out to old behaviors. Like I said, none of us are doctors. None of us were clinic, clinically certified to fucking deal with uh, addiction issues and mental health and relapse prevention or whatever it may be. We're not afford, they're not affording the people to get these type of uh, tools so they could deal with life and live life on life terms. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff that sometimes following your program is it may help you in there be a better man. And you may learn things that you could apply on the streets. But if you can't deal with all this other fucking shit that comes across you because you don't have the tools to deal with it, all that other shit's going to be useless. See, degenerate behaviors doesn't always mean someone is intensely bad or that they're trying to, you know, allow themselves to deteriorate. A lot of times they can't deal with the shit that's in front of them or know how to deal with it. That's why when you give people a little bit of liberties, you see what happens. It's the same thing when the bros used to be on the yards and there was no carnals to basically supervise them. You see what happened when they had all that liberty. You know, they were abusing it as well. It's just human nature. That could be the biggest disappointment is to see the person that you look up to, right? Be nothing more than just allow themselves to decline and just be a dolphin or just not know how to act in society, man. And it happens all the fucking time, man. 
People put too much in individuals based upon status. I put more into your actions, you know, your behaviors, your attitude. How do you act and conduct yourself out there in the streets? Because how you act in there, that could just be the fake you. A lot of people just fake it till they make it, you know. They like to have that status. That's all they've ever had their whole life is, you know, hey, I'm a big homie. I'm this and that. And then they get to the streets and they try to utilize that, but it fails as well. And so people don't realize that a lot of those times, those people that are trying to be these leaders and the whole status and, you know, push that narrative while they're behind the walls can't live up to none of that once they get out to the streets. Some of the people that I thought, you know, to look up to, right, man, it's embarrassing now just to see how they were different from when they were in prison to the streets. I know two homeboys that were straight solid in there, right? Fucking fully functioning, ready to go go get it, right? <laughs> Next thing you know, they've been out there in the streets. They on that dope. Now they fucking like to get dressed in women's clo clothing. They're just straight two chidojos now. You know what I'm saying? The other homeboy I was kicking it with, you know, he was, uh, you know, a young C at the time when he got pulled, you know? And me and him were close. Next thing you know, fucking, you got homeboys that were fucking running trains on his fucking old lady and shit. And, you know, uh, just certain things were just not him. And him hearing voices and all this crazy shit, man. To living out there in the streets. And I was like, man, this is just not the person that I knew when I was behind the walls. It's like, where is that person? You know, prison, in some senses, especially who you're functioning with politically, right? It kind of encloses you. It kind of limits you to... How you live your life. Your life is already fucking pretty much programmed for you on a day-to-day -day basis. Just different things you have to do. That once you're out there, you're given all this new freedom. And you may not have any, any more obligations. A lot of people don't know how to act out there in the streets. They don't know what to do with themselves. And they come to realize in the real world. Not in the street world. But in the real world. That who they thought they were is nothing compared to what people in the real world think of them. You're just another person out there just trying to fucking get a job, make money, and provide for your family. Or it gets too hard for them, they just fall off of that. The thing is, though, right, most of the people that I know that went to prison, not all, right? Let's keep it, keep it on the up and up. But a lot, man, they all fall off once they get to the street at some time or another. They fall off. They may do good for two years, eventually fall off. They may do good for five years, fall off. Or they may be on that. Uh, uh, that repeated cycle of recidivism going in and out. Getting out to the streets, they don't know how to act. Go to prison, they know how to confirm. It's kind of sad, though, but it's the truth. And I've always wondered, why can't people that can follow instructions and rules do disciplines and, and just stupid shit? Shit that's like, think about it, right? You're, you're disciplining yourself in there, you're doing all this and doing all that, but you can't do not even a fraction of that once you get home. And you just give it all up. Why are you doing it in there, but you can't do it out here? You know, it never made any sense to me. And that's when I started noticing that most people that, you know, commit to that lifestyle, whether they become a B or C, a lot of times, man, they're doing that to self-serve their ego, to feel important. They say that they're believers, but they're not. Because if they're a true believer, they're going to take those actions and apply everything that they've been taught out there in the guys as well. And that's what, why I say they have to have the homies there to pretty much hold them accountable, to keep them straight. Otherwise, they're just going to fall off over and over again. Now, why do those that are there on the SNY side? Like I said, a lot of times on the SNY side, man, it doesn't mean that you're not going to go out there and try to do good. There's dudes that go SNY and they come home and they never go to prison. They never get involved in anything ever again. And there's those that just come out saying, man, I'm, I'm not active, man. Fuck these dudes. I'm an active fool. That happens as well. Everybody's different. And see, it all comes to down to who you are. What do you believe in? Sometimes people have that belief that, oh, because someone's not active or they're no good, that they're supposed to be a fucking degenerate, that they're supposed to act like a certain way, you know, and that's the unfortunate thing that all the stuff that we talk about, all that active and active are just only titles. You represent who you are as an individual and as a man. Not what the status is of who you are or what you are, but what you do. Actions unveil the mask behind the words that you speak. You could say you're active. You could say you're a real one. You could say you're a true believer. But how many times have I heard that I'm a true believer, 
and seeing the actions I've seen out there in the streets when they got out, get out there. All the time, man. That's why I'll never let anybody bestow a title upon me and me have to live up to what that title may be because I'm always going to be who I am. If you think I'm supposed to be this or act like that because of this, I'm going to show you I'm different. You know? So anyways, man, I thought it's an interesting topic, man, because like I said, all the time, man, there was homeboys that come through solid and the next thing later, just dope things. And the dope thing behaviors would always come out. Like I said, in general in prison, there's a lot of people who just aren't good people. They just, they're never going to get it. They're convicts, they're drug addicts, they're manipulators, they're all that. So don't, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Don't think that everybody that's in prison, whether they're active or not, is there to fucking rehabilitate themselves because a lot of times they really aren't but there are some people who are trying to change you know and i just think it's unfortunate that people put certain tiles and labels just based upon one standings because there's a lot of dudes that were in good standings that were just nothing but pieces of shits in there but even more so at times out there on the streets it's just shit gets hidden at times and all those that you know there's those that talk about the fucking active size and try to fucking talk shit and they're like, their shit don't stink. And some of those dudes are the biggest piece of shits I've ever seen on the, that were on the S&Y side. So don't let the smooth taste fool you. That's it. It's your boy Flacco. I'm gone.